now. Hey everyone, welcome to this quick five minute video on Bitcoin. My name is Colt, I'm an instructor, I'm trying out YouTube, we'll see how it goes. Uh, in this video, you'll actually hear another voice alongside mine. His name is Kevin, he's a blockchain developer, whatever that means. He's basically a, an expert in Bitcoin. We made this video to quickly explain how Bitcoin works to somebody who doesn't know anything about it other than hearing about it in the news or, or maybe even somebody who owns Bitcoin but doesn't really understand what happens behind the scenes. So we're not going into like any code or real serious cryptography. Uh, we have an entire course on this if you're curious where we do go into cryptography, talk about the math and all of that. It's like eight hours, but this is just five minutes. So we're just quickly trying to explain behind the scenes what actually happens in the simplest possible terms. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we go. Okay, this is such a terrible slide if, if you have no context. <laughs> it looks like we're talking about the company Dropbox, which we're not. There is an actual item in the world called a Dropbox. Yeah, where you return videotapes. Sort of like a mailbox. Yeah, stuff goes in. Anybody can put something in there. Anybody can go to the library, put a book in, but only the library master, librarian. <laughs> library <laughs> there we library go. master. The, the library master can unlock that box and take all the books out. It's a yeah. one-way system. So why do we have this here? What's this have to do with Bitcoin? Suppose I'm gonna send Colt some Bitcoin. What Colt is gonna do is he's going to use an app on his phone to create a disposable Dropbox for me. Okay, and what is it actually called in Bitcoin? It's called an address. And right. that's really just a destination for me to send Bitcoin. It's like if I, he was sending me a letter, he needs a place to send it to. Yeah. In this case though, it's a really long string of numbers and letters that's impossible to remember. So instead, it's pictured here as a QR code. And many Bitcoin applications use QR codes as a convenience layer on top of the underlying address. Okay, so I make these, and here I actually have three of them because Kevin's gonna send me Bitcoin, my mom's sending me Bitcoin and my, my dog is sending me Bitcoin. And they each have a special place to send it to. Now, along with it, we have a key pictured. And that's because a, a lockbox or a drop box like this is useless if nobody can get anything out of there. Or if everybody can get it or, out of yes, there. Yeah. Or the opposite. But in our case, anyone can put something in, but only I, the creator who has the key, can unlock it. I basically tell Kevin, here's where I want you to send the Bitcoin to. Kevin's going to send me 10 million bitcoin i'm gonna send you 10 bitcoin 10 million would be half of all of the bitcoin i'll send okay, you 10, 10 bitcoin. i'm happy with yeah. 10 bitcoin Feeling that's very generous that's still quite a bit of money today so i put the bitcoin we'll, do, we'll explain what this process is mathematically on a computer but for the analogy just imagine that there's an operation i can do where i put digital bitcoin into this dropbox and as soon as it's in there it's locked in place i can't get it out right now, the next step and the next leap of understanding that you have to you have to try and take before we you'll have to take our word. Yeah, this for is it. the weirdest part. Yeah. Is that instead of me walking that Dropbox to Cult and saying, here's your Bitcoin, what I instead do is I take that locked Dropbox and put it in the middle of a public place. And that public place is called the blockchain. It's a, a pile of a bunch of other transactions, a bunch of these other locked boxes that somebody has a key to each one. The, the idea is that they're all out, everybody can see them. So mm -hmm. everybody knows, so they don't actually, we'll get into this, it's anonymous, it doesn't show who sent what to who, but everybody knows that there's a transaction from one person to another person for 10 Bitcoin that happened at X time in the day. Yeah, so imagine I put this Bitcoin into this Dropbox and then by putting in the blockchain, what I'm effectively doing is I'm leaving it in a public place. And it's as if I've taken this Dropbox and just left it in front of City Hall. But I'm confident that only Colt will be the one who can open this Dropbox. Nobody else can steal the Bitcoin inside of it. So we'll get into the reasons why this is so important that it works this way. There are a lot of benefits of doing it, of, of having transactions be public like this. And actually, it's sort of necessitated by the way Bitcoin works. But we'll get there, and we spend a lot of time talking about the blockchain. So when Colt wants to spend his Bitcoin, what he does is he goes to City Hall, he goes to the blockchain, where all the Dropboxes are stored, and he picks up the Dropbox that he knows he created. And I have my key at home. He has his key. I'm the only person who has it. And, and then... I go, and I unlock it, and I get my 10 Bitcoin, and I can spend them. I can exchange them for US dollars somewhere. I can do whatever I want. And he can send them to the next person. So to summarize, at, at the core of Bitcoin, there are two concepts, really. One is this idea of a one-way transaction, a, what we're calling a Dropbox. In reality, it's called an address. Bitcoin can go in, 
but only one person can take it out. So everybody can put something into there, only one person can take it out. So the second component is the notion of leaving that Dropbox in a public place. Instead of me manually delivering it to Colt and needing to see him in person or directly send him, for example, an email with the Bitcoin, I just leave that Dropbox in a public place and I'm confident and Colt is confident that when he wants to spend that Bitcoin that's locked in that box, only he will be able to unlock it. And now we're done. That's and it. Voila. 